Hey, welcome to Gates of the City on this Wednesday midweek service. We're excited that you're tuning in here. Wish we were back in our building having service, but since we're not, we're here coming to you and bringing the word. Uh, we will not have uh, a Mother's Day service this coming Sunday back in our building. Uh, wish we were, but we're not. We will shortly after that begin to get back in our building as long as everything goes as planned. So just be watching our website and our social media sites for when our first service back is, uh, but it will not be this Sunday. I want to just talk tonight uh, concerning prayer. Uh, tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer here in our nation. In 1952, President uh, Harry S. Truman uh, set in to law, actually it's a law, that uh, that day be recognized as the National Day of Prayer for the United States of America. And I'm, I'm privileged to know that, you know, that our president has set that in, and I'm so thankful for that day, for tomorrow. And we're going to talk about that and honor that day tonight. But prayer is more than just a day. Um, prayer is, is, a, is a relationship. It's, it's something that must be in your life for your whole lifetime. It's, it's not just acts of things that we do that we call prayer. It's a real relationship and a connection with God. And we're going to talk about that tonight. But I want to read a prayer from one of our former presidents, actually from 1962, uh, President John F. Kennedy. Uh, is a great uh, proclamation of his prayer for the people of this nation and the nation that I believe really fits with where we're at in our nation today. I know that President Trump in the last three years, two years, I guess, has had a uh, declaration, a proclamation of prayer. And uh, I, I, I didn't get that one today. I, I really liked what John F. Kennedy said, and I believe it fits where we're at in our nation today. And I want to read it to you. He said, let us pray for our nation and for our nations of the world. Alas, we especially ask God's blessing upon all of them. Our homes, that this integral unit of society may nurture our youth and give to them the needed faith in God, in our nation, and in our future. Our citizens, that they may increase in the desire to promote mercy and justice, peace and freedom, goodwill and brotherhood, that they may open new frontiers in helping to alleviate hunger, ignorance, and disease. How pertinent that is for today that he declared that, that disease would be removed. Our nation, that each achievement may add to our heritage of faith. And our world, that this generation may experience the fruits of peace and may know the real meaning of brotherhood under God. That's John F. Kennedy, our president from 1962, his proclamation of prayer for the nation. And I'm saying today that that. You know, the Word of God tells us to first of all pray. To pray for all those who are in authority, and actually it just says to pray for all men, all women, all people of the earth. I mean, that, that's, a, that's, that's a tall order to pray for everybody. And yet, um, the Bible's real clear. In, in Luke 18, 1, Jesus made uh, this statement. He said, then he spoke this parable that men ought always to pray and not to lose heart. Interesting. In, in the Amplified translation of that verse, he said also that Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not turn coward. And in parentheses in the Amplified, it says not to faint, lose heart, or to give up. Not to faint, to lose heart, or to give up. And what did he say empowers you to do that? Is to always pray. Yeah, well, you might say, you know, how, how am I going to pray? I mean, I've got to work. I've got to take care of my family. I've got to do this thing. He, I really believe what he's talking about here is that we're to have a mindset of prayer, a mindset of connection with God, because true prayer is defined as a connection and a communion with God, a relationship with God. When you have a relationship with God, you know how to communicate with Him. So you know how to do so many other things. And I, and I, and I want to just 
give you a list of things that really are, are a form of prayer. To worship God is a form of prayer because you're connecting and communicating with Him. To praise Him, to make declarations of His Word. When you're speaking the Word of God and declaring what the Word of God says, there's, there's amazing things that happen in that. But when you have a relationship with God and you know the things that He wants you to be saying and how He wants you to pray over yourself and over other people, it's amazing how powerful it is. There's a verse of scripture in the Bible that says the, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person, somebody that knows God, it accomplishes and avails much. It accomplishes much. Prayers accomplish much. You and I are to find out from God how we're to declare, how we're to worship and praise. Intercession is a form of prayer. When you, when you pray for the needs and, and, and of other people and, and of nations and of leaders and those kinds of things. Um, supplication or asking is a form of prayer. You know, I think some people think sometimes that all prayer is just about asking. But if all you ever do is just go before God. Oh God, oh God, help me this. Oh God, do this. Oh God, you know, change this. Oh God, this and this and this. If you're constantly asking and just talking to God in an asking form, I think after a while it, it gets kind of, uh, you know, monotonous and, it, and it'll, it kind of tires God out. He gets kind of frustrated with it. I mean, could God be frustrated of that? Well, would you get frustrated if, if people, all they did is ask you for something? They never wanted a relationship with you. They never wanted to ask you questions about yourself. They're always just asking you for something. After a while, you're going to get tired of it. I think God does too. And, and, and the reason people, all they do with God is ask, many times out of desperation, when they're at the end of their rope and they don't know what to do, a lot of times people say, oh my gosh, I, I guess I'm going to have to pray. Now, it, it, that's not real prayer, and that's why prayers don't get answered, because so many times people don't understand that true prayer comes out of the connection and the relationship that you have with God. It's vital. Um, uh, consecration is a form of prayer. When you don't really know how God thinks about a situation, you don't know what His will is for your life in a certain area, praying to God and asking Him, you know, the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open to you. And if you ask one time and it's not happened, continue to ask and thank him that what his will is for your life is being revealed to you. You know, the, that, that attitude is a form of con consecration and it is a form of prayer. But it's not the only kind of prayer. Uh, uh, faith is a form of prayer. He said, when you know what the will of God is and how to pray, when you pray the prayer of faith, things happen. When Jesus prayed the prayer of faith, things changed. People were healed. Situations were changed. Uh, people's lives were turned around and, and delivered of all kinds of things when Jesus prayed in faith and confidence that what he was saying was going to come to pass. That's what you and I have to develop in our relationship with God is knowing how important it is. You know, what I said in the beginning was that the, the scripture says, first of all, pray. And to pray for those who are in authority. Pray for those who are of the household of faith, people that believe the same way you do, because there's a devil out there that is attacking people and convincing people that God is not big enough to manifest and come through on all the things that he's promised. That's why people need prayer. That's why you need prayer. That's why you need to be praying for other people, not just about yourself, but praying for other people that their eyes be opened up so that they can see clearly. You know, when we're not in prayer, when we're not praising God, when we're not worshiping God, when we're not thanking God, when we're not going and consecrating ourselves to knowing what the will of God is, many times it's because we're in fear. And I want to read an interesting passage uh, from the Bible found in Job chapter 3. Um, a lot of people talk about the book of Job, Job himself. And there are many popular sayings, uh, you know, about Job. Uh, many times when people are going through something in their life, you know, they, 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 I've heard people say, well, you know, I've just got the curse of Job on my life. Well, some really bad things happened to Job. And many people think that God put those things on Job, that God caused those things to happen to Job. Well, I'm telling you that you read the book of Job, 
and you spend some time in it and you let God show you the truth in that, you'll find out that it wasn't God doing anything. You know, and, and it's strange because, and we don't have time to go into the whole book of Job today, but it's strange that people think that way. It's because they've not been taught different. And, and it's the same thing with prayer. Many people d don't understand prayer because they've not been taught. That's why we're talking about it tonight and the importance of it. But, but I want to read this passage in Job 3 and verse 25 and 6. It says, Job said this, For the thing that I most greatly feared has come upon me. The thing that I was so afraid of has come upon me. And what I dreaded has actually happened to me. And as a result of the fear and the dread, this last verse explains at this time in Job's life where he was. Now, that wasn't the, that, that wasn't the end of Job's life. The end of Job's life was full of peace and prosperity and health and healing and assurance and confidence. And, and actually the things that happened to Job was like over a year period of time or not even that long, you know, less than a year. The things that happened to him, a lot of people think what happened to Job was over a whole lifetime, but it wasn't because he tapped into the truths of God. He tapped into what, what God was saying was true and, and he repented of some things in his own life and, and he turned from those ways. And as he learned to develop a relationship with God and to know God, everything turned around. That's what I'm telling you today. If you think that God is doing some really bad things in your life, if there's something bad that's happened and you're blaming God for that because, you know, just out of default, you don't know who else to blame, I'm telling you it's not God. And many times we need to know and understand what is God. And when you learn how to pray and you learn how to pray for the nations and you learn how to pray for people and you learn how to think about others instead of always just thinking about it yourself, it helps to deliver you of the fear that Job was in. And as a result of that fear and dread in Job's life, listen to this second verse, this last verse, verse 26. He said, I am not at ease, I'm not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest, for trouble comes. Interesting. So Job said, in verse in in chapter 3 in verse 25 and 6 that what happened to him and what came on him was fear and dread now i want to say this about the fear and dread the fear and dread came on job because of his he 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 feared god he understood who god was you know he understood that that there was a god but he had no relationship with God. He didn't have an intimate relationship and an ongoing relationship that he practiced. Well, through this thing, you know, because he did have a fear of God and a reverence of God, he began to learn about God in the midst of all the things that he faced. That's where God becomes real to you. It's not the circumstances and the situations that teach you anything. Never. It's God in the midst of it. And that's where God wants to become who he really is to you. He wants you to have an intimate relationship with him so that you can learn how to pray, learn how to be at peace, like these different words describing the, the lack of peace. He said, I'm not at ease, I'm not quiet, I have no rest. And he said, trouble comes. And when you don't have that relationship and you allow fear and dread to rule your life and you, you don't begin to thank God and, and ask God to help you to overcome the situations because fear's out there and fear comes. But God is greater than the fear. I'm telling you today, God is greater. And in that relationship and that connection with God and that prayer life that you develop with, with God Almighty, when those kinds of things happen, then fear and dread go out. And now the opposite of, of no ease is being at ease and peace. The opposite of there's nothing quiet at all. Everything's loud. Everything's disrupted. No, there becomes a quietness and even a stronger peace as a result of it. He said, I have no rest. No, when you're at peace with God, when you have a connection and a relationship with God, there's a promise in the word of God that says that your sleep can be sweet and, and, and you can have the rest in your life you can be at rest and peace on the inside for he said trouble comes well, there's many verses of scripture that says those who put their trust in god 
there'll be no trouble. He didn't say that trouble doesn't come at you, but you don't give in to the trouble and the trouble doesn't overtake you. Why? Because you're not in fear and dread. A true prayer life with God is in your connection with Him, realizing, as it says in 2 Timothy 1.7, God hasn't given me fear, but He's given me a spirit of power, love, and a sound and a well-balanced mind. And because of that, I don't have to take the fear. I can rebuke the fear. I can resist the fear. I can give the fear no place. And, and all of those actions, those declarations out of your mouth are a form of prayer. But you won't get those things and believe in them and put them to work in times like where, when it's difficult or fear and dread or trying to overtake you. You won't exercise that in the midst of those times if you have no relationship with God, no connection with God. My encouragement to you tonight is how vital that your connection and your relationship with God is so that you can have that, that lifestyle of prayer and connection and intimacy with God and fellowship with God so, so that you have this relationship that is impacting and it impacts other people. Um, I, I started an, a number of years ago asking God about my prayer life and about, about really praying for other people. Over the last probably three years, I began to pray for actually thousands and thousands of people every day, tens of thousands of people that I pray for every day in a real unique way. I'm not talking about that tonight. Possibly we'll talk about that next Wednesday, but um, I'm not talking about that tonight, but, but I developed this, this relationship and this connection with God in a greater way in prayer, in praying for people in, in ways that I never knew that I could pray for people, that I could think about other people, that I could have other people's best interest at heart. Many of you that are watching on here tonight, I pray for you every day and have done that for a number of years on purpose because God has led me to do that. That came out of my relationship with God. I didn't just dream that up or read a book or somebody gave me a good idea about it. It came out of the inside of me. God saying, this is what I want you to do. And I want you to begin to believe in how effective that your prayers are, even if people don't know you're praying for them, even if you don't get any credit for the results or the things that happen in their life, I want you to continue to pray for people. And it's vital that we understand that in our relationship with God and how vital that that relationship truly is. In, um, in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25, he says, therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, this is Jesus, since he always lives to make intercession for them, for us, for people. Um, I don't have time to go into it tonight, but Jesus' main purpose this day is to pray for you, to pray for me, to pray for all of humanity. He believes in all of humanity. You know what? There, there could be things about your life that other people say, well, you know, you, you couldn't be a Christian. You couldn't serve God because, well, you do this or you do this or you have this in your life or you act like this or you did some ugly thing or you did some bad thing. I mean, who hadn't done a bad thing? Who hadn't had some issues in their life? You know, you, you, have, to, you have to be able to come to God and know that God accepts you and loves you and, 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 and that he wants to see you saved and, and, and set free, and that's his heart desire, and he prays for you every day that you do that, and once you get saved, that you continue to grow in a relationship with him. He's praying for you every day. You know what? If Jesus is praying for us every day, then, then, then that's why he told us men ought always to pray and not to turn coward, to faint, lose heart, to quit, to give up. That's the way we should live our lives. He's the perfect example, and he wants us to follow that. You know, we're not going to do it perfectly. I, I mean, there's always going to be something better that we can do and get better at how we pray and all those kind of things. But I'm just telling you today, Jesus loves you. He prays for you no matter what you've done, what you've ever experienced in life. He's for you and not against you. I'm going to say that to you again. God, Jesus Christ himself, is for you and he's not against you. And he wants a relationship and a connection with you so that you can demonstrate and, and, and actually, you know, 
release to humanity who he is to the world. The way that the rest of the world will know that God is real because he's real in us. He's real in humanity. Those that aren't saved that don't know God, they're not going to know and learn about God just from reading some book or thinking he's going to give them a sign in the clouds. He's gonna, they're going to start serving God and, and want to know more about God because of the love they see in you and the goodness in you. And the, the Bible says the kindness uh, uh, of God inside of another person is what leads someone else to God, to come to God. You know, so, so in this lifestyle and this development of, of living a life of prayer and praying always and not fainting, not giving in, not not being a coward in any way, you know, being willing to withstand even difficult times and say, you know what, it, it may look like this isn't working, but God is greater than this situation and we will get through this. That's what a life of connection with God, of intimacy with God, a life of prayer produces through your life. I don't want to just be a person that talks about praying. I want to be in on it. I want to be effectively praying and seeing other people's lives liberated and free. Because there's a passage of scripture, and, and I, I make this confession every day. I, I, I'm not holding on to my life every day and losing it, because the Bible says, you hold on to your life, you'll lose it. Now, today, I'm giving my life and gaining it. And the more we give of our life, the more we gain our life. Because what you gain is the understanding of why God put you on this planet, why he put you here. And he put you here to be a blessing to others. He didn't put you here just to think about yourself, get blessed yourself, spend everything in your life on yourself. No, he wants us to be blessed in him so that we can turn around and be that blessing to other people. And that's this life that I'm talking about, this life of prayer, connection, intimacy, and oneness with God. And I tell you what, it produces in everything that we do, in everything you do. I don't care what it is. It, it'll affect every area of your life if you purpose to develop this type of relationship. There's a great prayer that I want to end my message with today, found in Colossians 1. And, and I'm going to look at you today, and I'm telling you today that I'm praying for you this prayer. I'm praying this over you today. There's many thousands and thousands of people every day. This is a prayer that I pray. I don't just, just pray it word for word but it's like a model prayer for me to speak and declare over other people's lives. And I believe when I do it, it's affecting not only my own life, but the lives of those that I speak over. And today I'm speaking this over you and, and I'm speaking this over the people of this great nation in, on this eve of the national day of prayer. I'm declaring this prayer out of Colossians chapter one. You'll find it in Colossians one and, and starting with verse 19. Today I ask that we be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that we walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to His glorious power, with all patience and long suffering, with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. For God has delivered us from the power of darkness, transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our sins today. I believe that for you. I declare that over you. And tonight, I'm saying that and giving God all praise that those things are beginning to happen and come to pass in your life. I'm excited about it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for who you are to us. We honor you, we praise you, we thank you that your word, as it goes forth, it doesn't return void, but it accomplishes what we've set it out to accomplish. And we give you all the glory, and all the praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. If this is your first time to watch with us and, and you need more information or you'd like for us to pray with you and, or, or pray a prayer of salvation with you, we'd love for you to contact us at our email and you can find that on our website. Tonight, if you desire to honor God in your tithes and your offerings, as we always give people here at church the opportunity to do that, there's no pressure to do it. We're just giving you the opportunity to do it because the Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive because giving produces the receiving. And we believe that here at Gates of the City. 
So if, if you're desiring to do that, there's one of three ways that you can. You can go to our website and click on the Give tab, or you can text to 77977 to Gates of the City, or you can mail a check in. Address is on our website where to mail that check in. So tonight, if, if you're doing that and you're giving that, I'm believing for God's blessing to be on your tithing and on your giving in the name of Jesus. And we give God glory and praise for that tonight. Really glad that you're with us tonight. Be blessed and be safe, and we are going to see you in the building before long.